Alright, so in this video, I just try to show you how to create UML diagram. So the UML diagram, we're going to use the um, tools. So the first one we can look at is when you don't have your Java code and you pretty much normally when you design an application, you want to start with the UML diagram to represent your Java code or any code. UML diagram doesn't have to be just Java, it can be any code. Like, to represent what? The template of each class, pretty much, right? So if this is an object-oriented programming, so... Like, for example, something like this, I want to represent a room, right? Room is my object. Inside the room, I should have the wall color, color of my wall, which can be a string initialized to white, and minus mean private, okay, and plus mean public. This is the constructor name room, right, with the empty parameters, right. The room also have the attributes floor. So the second row here, these are the attributes. Attribute pretty much just all the characteristics of the room. Floor could be a carpet floor. Uh, this is a type we use colon, a string as a type. I have windows, like the number of windows is an int. This room has no windows, so we said zero. These are just the fields or the attributes of the object room. So you may see when we construct UML this way, you already see your class. You can create class like in Java if you want to use Java. Well, if I want to create a room, I just say new Java class name room, right? So according to that UML diagram, so I pretty much just can write a code. So normally an architect, software architect is the one who decided and we can just give Junior to write a code for us according to the UML because you already learned how to read it so this has to be private because minus right and we say the color of the wall right color right so that's a wall color string as a type so string wall I just copy exactly what it asks us to do and initialize to white something like that so that's how we write it out, right? So UML diagram pretty much just represent your Java class here, if you use Java. Example again, floor is private because my nuts string floor equals to carpet. So I want to make sure syntax is correct by all the string has to be inside a quotation, right? And we also have another attribute int, right? Windows equal to zero. And you see we have constructors, we have overloaded constructor, constructor with the same name without with different parameters here. All right. And we have set wall get wall colors. Set floor get floor. Set windows get windows. Two string, right? So this is just how you read it and just start to write a code. I'm not going to show you everything, I just going to show you that we can use this to generate the constructors with three parameters like that, right? 
and two parameters you can do the same without parameters you can do the same so right click generate constructor with no parameters something like that right and you can do the get in setters for all of them right and you can do two string all right so this is just we almost done pretty much right there's a few constructors that need to create it. So then generate right constructor only one constructor. So it just saves some time with the IntelliJ generate code right there. All right. Let's say I'm not gonna do all of them. Now, like this is how you use UML diagram. Now we see, okay, we need to have a driver, and we're gonna have main method to pretty much use this room inside here, right? Now, let's see how do we create one. If I don't have, if I want to design, I don't have Java code. Now I just show you we have UML, we create Java code, right? Like for example, we want to create an application, which is we need to build a simulator for a house, and the house has the rooms. So in Java programming, or we want to write a game, like Minecraft, they have the room, they have the building box, they have the house, right? Or person. So we need to represent each of those as an object. We start to say hey i i don't have the code yet but i'm a i want to design how my application should compose this of how many classes right instead of spending time to write a lot of code to building your game minecraft it's going to take a while for that and you may end up with building something that like you try to building a building skyscrapers without a blueprint so you try to build it and then maybe there's some errors <laughs> then you have to pretty much just bomb it or knock it down rebuild the wall make sense because you don't have a plan so this is the place where you make a plan for your project Let's say we say we're gonna make a house, okay? A plan is we need to create a class name house. So with the Lucy chart, you can just register and get free account to test. We can add more shapes here. That's the UML, right? That's what we want. UML has many. It's just like one subject textbook okay I just bought it too it's in the graduate level that's why normally it's not your level that going to design this it's just like architect they want to design software engineering right so but your level you should be able to read it right then that's why we introduce it here you should be able to read in order to create that <coughs> UML use case UML state sequences deployment entities. So those those are a lot of things. Those are symbols. Just like when we design a building, we have a lot of symbols. Now this is a simple one that we're gonna use. We just drag and drop, right? I already have template for you. I say I want to make a house. So that's the class name. Go there. And what should be the values or attribute of your house, right? It could be the number of rooms. So let me private for encapsulation room and type is room, which is that's the type, right? And 
type is going to be followed by columns. You don't need to initialize the values. Okay, that one we initialize them. House should have a roof, so roof. Okay, maybe at this point we can just do string. All right. But if you want to use a build a roof object, you could, but it's going to be too detailed now. All right, so we're going to make it simple now. That's why this is a good place to start to see maybe you feel like you want to build a roof because you try to make a Minecraft. Minecraft, you have to build your bricks, right? Then you're going to have to have bricks, something like that, class, right? Then you just keep dragging and creating it, right? And pretty much just give the attributes to that object. And the operations, operation pretty much just the methods, or you can look at in the term of like what is the method of the house. Like the simple one is uh, set the number of rooms, right? Set the roof color, right? Something like that. And the constructor also, like set room. You can pass in the int for the number, right? Int type, so we can say number. And set type is going to be void and like set roof All right could be the color right string we can add more as long as you can think about what you want to put in the house so this is a good place where you start your architect here right before you write the code so that is uml diagram Now we have relationships, okay. Like you see, house having to use room, room, right? That they, they have relationships. So in UML diagram, we have the symbols to create relationships. So let's look at the basic. Uh, tutorial here. So this is just explain the UML. Now they have an interface too. Use case interaction right package relationships dependencies dependency is a relationship between two things so it seems like this has a dependency right between room and the house that we just created now this is just example. I want you to look at example of dependencies that I use in this chart first. Okay, let's see. This dependent and independent. So think about who is dependent. Is room depending on the house or house depending on the room? So, you said room depending on the house. It's actually to see who using it. Like house, room doesn't have to have house in here. So room is independent, correct? But house has the room in here. Right, 
so house cannot stand without a room. So this